You're watching San Antonio's only live university student-produced newscast, Lakefront Live. Real news for students, all in one place. Hi, welcome to Lakefront Live. I'm Roxana Rubio. And I'm Alejandra Guzman. Breaking news. Oh. Breaking news coming out of Washington, D.C. A woman was shot to death yesterday afternoon near the White House. The woman identified as 34-year-old Miriam Carey. Police say Carey drove up to a barrier at 15th and East Street checkpoint where she was approached by Uniform Security Service. She backed into a barrier then struck an officer with her vehicle. At the point, Secret Service fired seven shots into the vehicle. She managed to drive away, speeding down Pennsylvania Avenue near Capitol Hill. She came to a stop after hitting more barriers. Officers from D.C. Metro Police fired more shots, striking Carey several times. Moments later, she was pronounced dead. Inside the car was Carey's one-year-old child, who was unharmed. Two police officers were also injured in the incident. Of all the responsibilities the Constitution endows to Congress. Two should be fairly simple. Pass a budget and pay America's bills. But if the United States Congress does not fulfill its responsibility to pass a budget today, much of the United States government will be forced to shut down tomorrow. On Tuesday, October 1st, and our government is still shut down. Here are some government services that are affected from the shutdown. New gun permits will not be processed during the shutdown. No money will be available for the WIC program. The IRS will suspend all audit activities. The VA will not be sending disability checks to veterans. Funding for McNair and TRIO will be affected. Also, the shutdown is costing the United States over $12 million an hour. To kick off Domestic Violence Awareness Month, Olu held a special event to teach students how important it is to say something when they or someone they love is being abused. Shannon Marie has the story. According to the Violence Policy Center, Texas is ranked 19th nationally in murder rates involving homicides against women by males. The stats are from a study released in mid-September. Since October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, HALO and the Domestic Violence Awareness Committee hosted the event, Say Something, which gives students more insight about the troubling epidemic of domestic violence. And so we want to help raise awareness, but especially empower people to say something, to do something to help end domestic violence. One in four women are abused, as well as one in six men. These disturbing numbers are the reason the university put this event together. People don't start by hitting someone. They start with much more subtle forms of control, and that's the time when it's best to recognize and stop that behavior or get out of that relationship. 75% of people in the United States know someone who is directly a victim of domestic violence. So another purpose for the event was not just the awareness of the person being abused, but also those around them. Like I already have a few friends who are like, oh, I don't like my relationship because they're always telling me what to do. And so like, I just thought it'd be a great opportunity for me to learn more just so I can help. And also my major is social work, so it's really good to know the science. The Date Violence Safety Plan provided those who attended with a checklist. Questions on the checklist were, Does your partner act jealous and possessive towards you? Does he or she try to control you? Put down your friends and family? Use looks or threats to make you do what he or she wants? If one or more apply to you, then you are in danger. The dangerous thing about domestic violence is that after it's been ongoing, it often ends in death. Shannon Marie, Lakefront Live. 
The International Business Program, sponsored by the Free Trade Alliance in San Antonio, allows students the opportunity to interact with international business since its start in 2009. Students from 40 universities and 31 countries have participated in this program. Students will be put in teams of four or five along with a mentor. The object is to develop a 10 to 12 page business plan which addresses environmental, sustainability and international component. The early bird application is deadline is Friday, November 15th. For more information on this event, contact Roxanne Lozano at rllozano at olusa.edu. In the professional world, first impressions can mean getting the job you want or losing the job to somebody else. Career Services recognizes the importance of first impressions and offers students a step in the right direction with a picture. Basically just on why LinkedIn is important, um, why we should uh, have one, uh, it was a lot about um, the steps, to what you need in your LinkedIn. This event here to, that goes step by step to get you every information you need uh, to make yourself more marketable to uh, industries out there that are looking to hire you. Math tutoring is available for anyone needing help with college algebra. Stop by Meds Room 110 and 111 and the Math Society will gladly assist you. Tutoring hours are from 4 to 9 p.m. Free pizza and drinks will be provided. RA coordinators created an event for students to take their mind off of midterm stress. Students brought their own t-shirts to Centennial Courtyard where they made custom one-of-a-kind t-shirts using the spray paint provided by RA coordinators. For the students so they can have something fun and free and it's just a cool way for them to be able to design something that's theirs and not a traditional tie-dye because tie-dye will fade out really quickly and spray paint doesn't. So it'll stay there, it'll last longer and it'll be something unique that no one else has. After the break, an on-campus cellular molecular biologist tells us her opinion on the universal flu vaccine. Stay with us. On our last newscast, we told you about the possibility of a universal flu vaccine. Lakefront Live met with Dr. Jess White Phillip, the assistant professor of biology and cellular molecular biologist. She informed us what the flu vaccine does is put up a wanted poster of the proteins that are not supposed to be there. Your body then makes antibodies to attack and get rid of the unwanted proteins. When asked about the universal vaccine that would produce more CD8 T cells to fight off the virus, Dr. Phillip wasn't too convinced that stimulating those cells would be the best approach. Instead, she did tell us what she believes would be a better method of finding the universal vaccine researchers is attempting to develop a vaccine that would stimulate the immune system to create more of these guys. My vote would be for the universal vaccine that targets the piece of the virus that's conserved rather than stimulating my body's cells to divide and grow at a different rate. We don't know enough about uh, the human body quite yet. We're still learning every day. And while I won't say it is safe or it is not safe, I will just say that in my experience, um, the human body generally knows better than we do about what it would like to do. Dr. Phillip recommends to her students to prepare for the zombie apocalypse in order to prepare for the flu and shared a website you can access by googling preparedness 101 zombie apocalypse. When we come back, Shannon has your entertainment report. And now here's a look at your weekend weather. The rest of today will be partly sunny with a high near 91. You may see some isolated showers but nothing severe. Tomorrow will be partly sunny with a 20% chance of light showers, high of 82. Temperature will drop down to around 57 degrees at night. Sunday will be mostly sunny with the high near 77. And Sunday night looks most, mostly clear with the low around 53. Stay tuned. .com provides the best internet coverage of high school sports in all of South Texas.
Get all the scores, schedules, and more from area high school sports all in one place at sasports.com. Also get your sasports.com magazine fall issue today at Alltech, Cecil Ford of Hondo, Burger 5, Smile Dental Center, Mecca Sportswear, and Select Transmissions. Want it delivered to your home? Just email us at jtope at sasports.com. Providing elite coverage to high school sports, sasports.com. In the spirit of Halloween, here are some fun facts. Halloween is the second most commercially, su commercially successful holiday, with Christmas being the first. Halloween's candy sales average $2 billion annually in the United States. Snickers are the most popular candy for trick-or-treaters. Besides orange, pumpkins also come in white, blue, and green. Well, the movies are filled with Oscar winners this weekend as Shannon fills us in in the new films hitting the big screen today. Looking for an out-of-this-world experience this weekend? Well, I have just the movie for you. Oscar winners Sandra Bullock and George Clooney star in Gravity about a medical engineer and an astronaut who work together to survive after an accident leaves them adrift in space. The heart-pounding thriller pulls you into the infinite and unforgiving realm of deep space. Thanks to modern technology, Bullock didn't have to worry about a certain phobia that had her terrified until a week before filming. We, we thought we were going to have to shoot two weeks in the Vomit Comet, which is this plane that literally in 30 second intervals plummets out of the sky so you have 20 seconds of pure weightlessness. And we thought that that's how we would achieve that look. But in that six months or that year, you know, when I spoke with him, turns out that they were able to, catch, technology was able to catch up with what was in Alfonso's head. Um, it was actually George that told me that we weren't using the vomit comet like a week before we were shooting. And it turns out that they were intentionally not telling me, so I would then be very happy to do these other things. And they were right. I was like, I don't care what you have me do. I just don't want to be plummeting out of the sky in a perfectly, perfectly fine working plane. Clooney talks about what it was like to work with the talented Sandra Bullock. Working with her was just fun because, you know, it was a lot of, it was truly a lot of laughing. And that's always, it's very helpful in those situations because physically it's a really uncomfortable, obviously, you know, it's not the most comfortable, just wearing the suit's uncomfortable. Um, but it, it isn't the most comfortable uh, thing to do. And so it really helps to be able to laugh in between those 45 minutes while they're setting the next shot. Rotten Tomatoes gave the movie a 96% rating, which could mean good news at the box office. Gravity hits theaters today. Justin Timberlake is not just a music superstar, he is getting a lot of acclaim for his acting, as the SAG Award nominee stars in the new movie, Runner Runner, along with Oscar winner Ben Affleck. Poor college student Richie First, played by Justin Timberlake, cracks an online poker game which goes bust. When he arranges a face-to-face -face meeting with the man he thinks cheated him, Ivan Block played by Ben Affleck, things get a little out of hand. Richie, how you doing bud? Fellas, basically this place is to crocodiles what Goldman Sachs is to pricks with skinny ties. Cruise ships come down here, they dump off their edible waste. The crocs have learned to swim down river and they know to bite whatever jumps in the water. All right, go ahead. All right, ready? Christ, Ivan. How's that feel? Is that any good? Hey. Yeah. Oh, shh. Do something. Are you all right, Richie? <laughs> You seem a little worked out, you know. Yeah, I'm good. Timberlake talks about the chemistry between Affleck and himself, which made the movie come together so well. But with Ben and I, I don't know. It was, uh, I don't know. We, he's as collaborative as I am, and I think that that's, that's why our characters on, on screen as well are... Are, are, they play really well together is, is because we had that chemistry off screen and we just both wanted to make the best movie we could possibly make. And that's, all any, that's all anybody on set wants to do. 
Ben Affleck discusses his role as the bad guy in the movie, which was rare to him, and how he brought that character to life. Yeah, I was really excited to get a chance to play a guy like this, even like with the character in Argo, and before that I had this Terrence Malick movie, and characters who were really like uh, uh, reserved and opaque and didn't say much, and you know because of who they were and what they did and so on. Um, so I was really looking for a part where I could play somebody who could like, uh, you know, like in one of these more genre pulpy things, had monologues and like sort of chew the scenery kind of. Uh, kind of parts and, and um, it reminded me a little bit, I had so much fun in this very small movie I did called Boiler Room about 10 years ago and uh, I hadn't gotten to do something that fun since. Runner Runner also comes out today. What would you like to see next week on Entertainment? Send us your thoughts on Twitter at hashtag Lakefront Live Entertainment. Thanks. SASports.com provides the best internet coverage of high school sports in all of South Texas. Get all the scores, schedules, and more from area high school sports all in one place at sasports.com. Also get your sasports.com magazine fall issue today at Alltech, Cecil Ford of Hondo, Burger Five, Smile Dental Center, Mecca Sportswear, and Select Transmissions. Want it delivered to your home? Just email us at jtope at sasports.com. Providing elite coverage to high school sports, sasports.com. Well, that does it for us today. If you have a story idea for our next newscast, tweet us at Lakefront Live using hashtag Student Investigators or post on our Facebook wall. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend.